So what we're going to do in this video is examine the effect of taking a base and raising it to the power of a variable. So at this point you've seen lines, you've seen quadratics or parabolas, and you've seen cubics, but what does this function look like? You can see here I've got a base of 2 and I'm raising it to the power of x. So that's a variable in the exponent. What this means is we are going to take this base of 2 and we're going to multiply it by itself some number of times. How many times? x times. So we're going to do this for different values of x. The best way to analyze functions I find is to make a table of values. Remember with a table of values you can take your x values, sub them into your function, get y values, and then plot them on a graph. So I've got a graph behind this green box, I'm not going to reveal that quite yet. But that's what we're going to do is we're going to analyze this function using a table of values. So I'm going to start with 1, 2, 3, and 4 as x values. And you can see if I take 1 and I substitute it in for x, I get 2 to the power of 1, which we know is 2. Okay, so right away I know that 1, 2 will be a point on my graph. Okay, if I substitute 2, I've got 2 to the power of 2, which we know is 4. And I'm going to continue in that way to generate this table of values. Okay, so I've got a bunch of y values here. So if I were to plot these points on a graph, you can see my y values appear to be increasing. And if you, if you look closely, you can see they're actually increasing by a factor of 2. Now this makes sense because for every x value that we increase, we're multiplying by another 2. But let's see what happens if I look at values less than 1. So for instance, 0. Anytime you raise any base to the power of 0, you get 1. If I substitute negative 1, a little bit of exponent law work here. If you have a negative exponent, we know we can just put a 1 on top, and we can put our base on the bottom with a positive exponent. Likewise, if I substitute negative 2. So I'm hoping you're comfortable with your exponent laws to generate this half of the table of values. You can see that I'm still increasing by a factor of 2 here, which makes sense. If I decrease the number of 2s I multiply by, I should decrease by a factor of 2 as well. Okay, so I'm going to just plot these points on a graph. I've done that using a, a graphing calculator. But you can see if I plot my points, for instance, 1, 2, that's this point here. 0, 1, you can see is right there, and so on and so on. So you can see that my y values appear to be getting bigger each time. And that happens by a factor of 2 because I'm increasing the number of 2s that I'm multiplying each time. Okay, so this is what a graph of y equals 2 to the power of x would look like. What would 1 half to the power of x look like? Well, again, this means the same thing. This means that I'm going to get a bunch of different y values depending on the number of times that I multiply 1 half by itself. So I'm going to analyze this function in a similar way. I'm going to generate a table of values, and then we'll generate a graph and see what it looks like. So if I have just 1 half, if I take 1 half and I raise it to the power of 1, we know that's just going to be 1 half. If I have two 1 halves being multiplied, I've got 1 half to the power of 2, you should know that we have a quarter. 1 to the power of 2 is 1, 2 to the power of 2 is 4, so you get 1 quarter. Okay, this is kind of getting scary because you can see I'm getting into smaller and smaller numbers. Let's go backwards. Let's look at 0. Okay, same thing. Anything to the power of 0 is 1. If we raise 1 over 2 to the power of negative 1, using your exponent laws again, you, you should know that you can flip this fraction and just write it as 2 over 1, also known as 2. So you can see I'm actually increasing by a factor of 2 as I go into the negative numbers. Okay, so the trend that you're going to see here is that as your x values get bigger, you're dividing by 2. And that makes sense. We're adding another factor of 1 half to decrease our y values. Now if I were to plot these x and y coordinates on a graph, if you just pick a point, 1 comma 1 half, you can see that point is approximately here. 0, 1 is here, and so on and so on. Okay, comparing these two graphs, you can see that they're, they're the same size in that they both increase by a factor of 2, but it depends on which direction you're going in. So for this one, you can see I'm increasing by a factor of 2 to the right. This one I'm increasing by a factor of 2 to the left. Okay, so just a little summary of the two graphs that we just looked at. We call a graph exponential growth if the base happens to be greater than 1. And we've seen that. That was our first example we looked at. We say that this thing is growing exponentially by a factor of 2. We say it's exponential decay if your base is between 0 and 1, and that was the example we just looked at. We call this a decay function. It's decaying by a factor of 1 half, so you're losing your y value by a factor of 2 every time. Notice that both of these graphs pass through the point 0, 1. That has to do with the property of exponents, that any base to the power of 0 is 1. So therefore, no matter what happens here, we're always going to pass through 
0, 1. Unless we were to you know, somehow reflect this graph over the x-axis, which we may or may not cover in the next couple of video lessons. So I just want to go over kind of an interesting example here. I've given you a graph, I've given you four different points, I've written them in the table of values, and what I want you to do is come up with the equation for this graph. Just to look at the table of values here, you can see that I am increasing by a common factor of three. Because I'm increasing by a common factor of three, we know that our exponential function is gonna have a base of three. Okay, we don't know, there may be some sort of a value here. You can see that this graph does not pass through zero, one. So there has to be some sort of factor involved here. I just, right away, I can pick out the base just by examining that pattern in the y values. Now in order to determine that a value, just like you would if you had like a quadratic function or something that you want to solve for a, you can just pick a point from your table of values and substitute it in. I'm going to pick the easiest one, which happens to be 0, 2, and I'm just going to substitute it into my, into my function. So if I substitute 0 for x and 2 for y or f at x, you'll see that you have 3 to the power of 0. Anything to the power of 0 is 1, so we don't need to write this term. We solve for our a value of 2, and we can write our function as f at x equals 2 times 3 to the power of x. So this is just a preview of something you're going to see in upcoming video lessons. This is a stretch by a factor of 2, very similar to the discussion that we had on, on stretches and compressions for uh, the basic functions that we looked at in the previous unit. But you can see that I have stretched this function by a factor of 2. I no longer pass through 0, 1. I'm passing through 0, 2. Okay, so that's really just a basic introduction to exponential functions. Stay tuned for more video lessons on exponential functions. As usual, thanks for watching.